I'm a pretty girl, and you're listening to the Green White Leakin podcast. <laughs> the Green White Leakin. Yes, <laughs> I fucked that up. Welcome to the this week's episode of the Green Light Weekend, everybody. Yes, yes. It was it was a special one for me, and I think Phil as well. We it was had good. Our buddy Dave Oakley on. He's a new friend. Mm-hmm. We've met before, but we finally got acquainted, which is how I prefer to do podcasts. Dove a little deep. Dove pretty deep. Like there was darkness there was light at the end of the tunnel it's a fucking it's really a story of fucking life shit yeah. gets tough man and yeah. finding your way out and actually discovering a passion is such a beautiful thing you it know, inspired me though it i've ins- been writing down all my thoughts i think of something funny and i'm like oh that might be a good joke that's important yeah it inspired yeah. the fuck out of me as well definitely I've, I've been writing a lot i went to the open mic night on thursday and then the show on saturday uh, Zach Abeda out of Albuquerque was opening or er, headlining. It was really good, and there's some local comics on that as well. But yeah, I'm fucking inspired, Phil. I think this Thursday might be the night I get on stage. You gonna do it? I think so, man. Damn. I'm kind of it. I feel like this Thursday is a special Thursday in Durango. There's a this is tomorrow. If you're listening to this the day it came out, um, but there's a show. Under the Irish Embassy in Durango, I think it's an open mic night at 8. Then there's an open mic night at 9 at the El Rancho? Mm-hmm. El Rancho. The Ranch. The Ranch. In yeah. English. There you go. And there's <laughs> a big show at the Henry Strader Theater at 10. And oh, the headliner, there's three shows. Yeah. Huh? I thought there was only two. No. Uh, the headliner is, um, he's about to do a tour. And our good friend Dave Oakley who we had on this episode is going to be his opener, maybe his feature act while he's doing his Arizona stretch. Nice. So if you want to see a preview of that, if you're local in Durango, go ahead and check that out tomorrow, Thursday. And, um, you know, show some support. It's our local comedy scene is becoming more and more important to me as I'm getting more and more inspired. And it was just beautiful to see a turnout, but the straighter wasn't as packed as I would hope this Saturday. So, Let's show some more support on Thursday, and it's local comedians. Show some yeah. love. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah. Definitely going to go. I wanted to say that we drank some Kratom tea on mm. this episode, and one thing to notice, the difference between that and regular opiates is we were pretty fucking on point, you know? Super on point. No goofy slobbering that you get from all the other opiates. Definitely not. And I'm not an opiate dude, but I did like the, the wave I was riding yeah. after it's the podcast. very social. Yeah, you super feel social. Good. Yeah. And it's not like cocaine social where you're like inside, you're like kind of scared and insecure <laughs> and just like, I got to get the fuck out of here. But, you know, it was just like enjoying the moment and comfortable. Right. It was very comfortable. But dosage is important. If you listen, you will get details on that. Definitely. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to check out Hip Hop Trip on SoundCloud. He does the intro outro music. He's our boy. He's in Norway. We love him. Um, badass little white kid. Badass as fuck. Yeah, I think he grew up in Compton too. So <laughs> there's that. Um, GLW underscore podcast on Instagram. Greenlight Weekend at Gmail dot com, and you can find us on YouTube. Greenlight Weekend three words. Anything else, Phil? That's it. Love yourself. Love yourself. We love you, motherfuckers. We love Dave Oakley. Thank him for coming on. And don't forget, good. if you're in Durango, open mic nights every Thursday at the ranch. Check it out. Enjoy. Hallucinations, I'm seeing hallucinations and vibrations. The wall ceiling is peeling paint. Hippie flipping with dank. Them Lucy and Molly skanks. Skipping them dinner plates. Tripping, I'm feeling great. Trip. Uh, yeah, yeah, came to bust, flip most why got me feeling danger blood So just hang them up, you can't hang with us, uh, uh When I came up, pop told me that I gotta stay tough uh, Raging against that lay parks with this microphone and I'm banging up What? I don't need to break the puff Yeah, bitch, I throw dank enough And we are rolling What's up, fellas? Hey, guys, how are you? Doing good I'm lovely Um, our guest today is Dave Oakley That's right Dave Oakley, you're a local comedian Yeah this started in Durango last February. Nice. So, almost got I, a year under your belt. Yeah, almost a year. And I've only done comedy in Durango except for one show I did in Farmington, actually, a couple months back. How, How was, was the that? crowd there? Dude, it was actually awesome. Um, 
I was opening for this guy named Kostaki Kanopoulos, and he's yeah, I know he's him. on like yeah, he's on XM a lot, and he's uh he has he he t- calls into a weekly sports mm-hmm. radio show called the Bob and Tom Show. So that's how I found he out. He sold a hundred. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, he sold well, he like a hundred. Used to 100- to Bob and Tom as kids with oh, their did parents. You? Yeah, see, I didn't know about it every <laughs> I morning. Pretended to when I was with them. Now that like uh, he had sold like 125 tickets to this place called No Worries Bar and Grill, mm-hmm. which is like at the airport. Totally, it was so weird. That was my hang, bro. Really? Oh yeah. But it was a cool bar, and we got there, and the crowd was great. Like it was one of my best shows Badass. to date. Yeah, Good. I was I was a little nervous, you know, because mm-hmm. I didn't know Farmington at all, mm-hmm. and you know, it turned out to be good. But they, were, I think they, were, I mean. Because they knew who they were going to see. Right. They were there for him, and he did not disappoint. But even good. though I was just... But they were there to laugh. It wasn't just like right. a random bar. Yeah, no or... hecklers or anything. Yeah. It was that's surprising. Ca- that's kind of the bar you'd want to do it at, in my opinion. Oh, for like, real? There's a reason I used to hang out there. And my mom went there a lot, and that's where I got my first legal beer, I believe. Oh, wow. And, was that uh, when it was Zebras? Uh-huh, Zebras. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Because we knew the owners easy. and stuff, and... Like, I ended up banging, like, a couple of the bartenders and shit. <laughs> That's where some of the original Greenlight Weekends happened. It's true. Oh, really? Yeah. You guys were doing it back then? Not the podcast. Not the, the oh. Greenlight Weekend. <laughs> oh, oh, like where you got the name from? Yeah. yeah oh, the, okay. The term, basically, I got arrested. I was on probation. Once a month, I'd have to take a piss test. That weekend after the piss test, it was always on a Friday. So oh, that nice. weekend, we'd just go fucking hard. Nice. And by the next piss test, I was always clean. It was once a week a piss test? Once or a once month. a month. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So for a while. One green light yeah. weekend where everything was go. Oh, yeah. And then you got three weeks to clear yeah. out. Yep. You're solid. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's a cool name. Phil was uh, living out at the lake for the last summer, and we would just, dude, just go hard. Hard. Oh, that sounds yeah. like fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, good. Lots of drugs. Yeah, I bet, dude. <laughs> so there is a day it here. Expanded my mind and then it collapsed in on itself. Yeah, for a while. that's what happens, and man. Yep. Yeah, some of the weirdest fucking stories I have came from those weekends. Just like those two at day periods. Bar? Huh. Uh, not so much at that bar. A couple times. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Some weird shit happened at that bar. Yeah. And I, those girls are fucking amazing. They've driven me home before. Like multiple times, like the okay, if you there? can just hang out until we're closed, we'll give you a ride oh, home okay. and stuff. Like on my birthday one year, uh, one summer we moved out of our house in Farmington. I moved in with my great grandma. I was still on probation. Phil moved out to the lake in his houseboat, and um, on my birthday I just went to Zebras. I had to work or something the next day, so I didn't like go out to the, the lake or whatever. And I got so fucking shit faced for <laughs> free. That these girls had to like hand me to my grandmother, like <laughs> just like pass you off. Here he is. <laughs> we kept him alive. Obviously, wow. my grandma was like, great for shit. But that's some nice ladies, dude. That's that's the kind of place it was, you know, for me. Badass, yeah. And everywhere else, it was just like I just I like going places where I know people. You know, sure. I go to Scott all the time. I know everybody that works there. Right. Like, what's up? How's your right. dog? Whatever. You know. Yeah, it's more fun when you have a community to hang with. Yeah, it's out true. And about. Yeah. So and that was my cheers. To... Yeah. Oh, got you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. How long have you been doing comedy for? Just since uh, February, 11 months. Nice. Yeah, next February 15th will be a year. Strong stage presence for like oh, a short you. amount of time. If you ask like uh, an established comedian, you okay. know, like yeah. you're almost to the year point and all I listen to is fucking podcasts that mm-hmm. comedians do and they're talking shop and shit. Right. So like Same. almost all I'm exposed to is like stand up comedy and fucking comedians talking about comedy. Dude, that's exactly how I got into it, was doing the same yeah, thing. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I just nerd out on it. I, I'm too. obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Like, I listen to, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of Kill Tony. Oh, po- like, I've I was seen, to I was just watching ago. it before yeah. you got Really? Me yeah. too. I was watching it before I left the house. I swear to God, it's on my phone right now. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I watched like every episode of that. I mean, I've, I mean, that's on YouTube. And right. then like, I've rewatched some of the better ones quite a bit. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, they give so much good advice, you know, like they kind of teach you if you're like paying attention, like mm-hmm. what to do and what not to do. And I attribute that to any, any like progress i've made right right yeah, for sure just that's you studying just, game tape yeah just like trying to figure yeah. it out do you yeah. write a lot like do you write like daily or what's i don't have a set process mm-hmm. unfortunately i kind of write when the lightning strikes mm-hmm. um which Allow isn't good I, steer. yeah yeah and i just need I, i'm busting myself in the balls all the time because like i need to like sit down mm-hmm. and dedicate you know even if it just starts off 30 minutes a day right you know, like 
I don't know if you've probably heard about this, but Jerry Seinfeld, mm-hmm. when he was coming up, he uh, had something called breaking the chain. He didn't want to break the chain. On a calendar, he would put a red X on the day for every day of the month that he wrote five hours or more. Damn. And he never wanted to break the chain. So he wrote when he was coming up like five hours a day. We're just working on his craft. And that seems... That's how you get that's good. Cra- but yeah, and he's yeah. the most highly paid comedian in the world right. he's rich as fuck dude he's yeah. like a, almost a billionaire yeah. <laughs> and that's <laughs> anything just focus focus and yes. attention how and about time. them airplane peanuts <laughs> and not to be <laughs> Look what it's i'm like. not a big fan like of his material and really? for the time too yeah just, it just doesn't stimulate me enough, i love you know? the show it's see i never really got to watch it too much but when i did watch it i dug it yeah um there was this other show was it fucking like coach or something like i coach. saw like a couple episodes ever and i was like where did that fucking that show go familiar. and then when i hear I people remember. talk about it now they're like that piece of shit <laughs> oh really <laughs> but, but i watched I, coached in uh seinfeld what was the other fraser cheers Fre- fraser i was came mad off at of, fraser yeah fraser oh, was off. a spin-off of cheers oh, right. oh yeah yes. yeah that yeah, guy moved right. to seattle mm-hmm. i need to rewatch. Yeah, but cheers. all those are good and for the time you know that's what was funny yeah Definitely. Those were the jokes. But his work ethic is something like I think about it all the time. I'm like, man, if I can't even just sit down and do 10 to 30, 30, yeah, minutes, 30 a day, minutes a day, then I've got no chance. So I I know I'm getting there just mentally. That's been my big mm-hmm. thing with the beginning Winding of this up. year is just like making sure I make total use of every hour that I have in the day. You know, you yeah. 24 hours. That's I'm right. Like, you have to sleep for six to eight of them. You're right. Yeah. Know? That's smart. I mean, that's... That's how people get successful is they utilize every minute of their day. And I've fucked off for 30 years of my life. Yeah, I know what you mean. I keep saying I'm 30, but I'm 29. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much 30. Pretty much, yeah. How old are you? I'm 32. 32? Yeah, I'll be 33 next month. And you're married. Or in March. Yeah, man, I've been married seven years. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I got married young. I got married at 25. She was like 21. Damn. Something like that. That's yeah. love right yeah, there. I've been with Coel Definitely. since we were 17. I was 18. She was Damn. 17. So that's years. over 10 years. Yeah, that's we even longer. We haven't been married. But yeah, but still. I mean, a long time. Yeah. Still together, growing with each right. other. Yeah. That's every my girl. Day. Does she ever come watch you do comedy? Oh, every time. Oh, yeah. Really? Every she's time she's there. off. Yeah, like she was there last night. Mm. Um, she's definitely my biggest supporter that's you know badass. she she's helps me like i mean i'll go over jokes with her and she'll tell me no that's shit really her said that's good you should use that and yeah that's like awesome, yeah she's good very honesty. helpful mm-hmm. yeah, yeah she's very honest about it too like she'll she'll just tell me straight up now <laughs> and, that, and that's good that's what i need to hear i don't want to run a joke by her that i think might be funny and she tells me it's good just because she doesn't want to like hurt my feelings right. or whatever <laughs> not that i really have any but like yeah don't pussy she, foot around yeah Let's exactly fucking... yeah and I love that, dude. You know, it's that, hard to be that critical honesty. and honest with your loved with one. With your loved one, you know? yes. But we're, I mean, but we're like that with each other. I mean, it's not with comedy for her, but in anything, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I'll always be brutally honest with her. Does she? She'll say, "Does this look good?" I'll be like, "No, I don't think that looks good." You know, <laughs> but whatever. And it doesn't hurt her feelings. She's just asking my opinion, so I tell it. Well, that's what you're doing. She's yeah, asking for right. your opinion. Does your uh, act change at all when she's watching you? Does it change no. your attitude at all? Nothing. Nope. You no, not at care all. Less. Couldn't care less. I think that that is a sign of love, like true, <laughs> yeah. real, just like not even caring whether they're there or not. Oh you yeah, know I, I mean? don't even think about it as oh, cat's here tonight. You uh-huh. know, like I mean, it's just because she's been there since the first time. You know, pretty much every performance except for there was a period of like a month or two where she had to work every Thursday, mm-hmm. so she missed a bunch of shows at that point. But I mean, yeah, it's just she's always just been there and. Yeah, I never even thought about it like like that. I, it doesn't phase me at all. Yeah, I don't. Her think there Coel, or not there, I don't think Coel would bother me. Yeah, I'm still just I'm still scared. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's fucking scary. It's gonna happen sometime. <laughs> Definitely, oh. I think I have to go by myself. Honestly, like no homies, just like yeah. walk in and just fucking try it. Yeah, like because there's this freedom. Even that, like, one of Evan's parties or something. Our homie has these dinner parties and, like, 40 people show up. It's crazy. Oh, nice. And he has a big-ass house. and It's fun. But there's a lot of people that I'm like, I'm never going to see this motherfucker again. And I'll just, like, I'll talk your goddamn ear off. You know <laughs> yeah. I mean? And yeah. I'll just say ridiculous Make shit. Laugh. Lots of dick jokes last time. <laughs> Lots. <Yeah. laughs> I was just across the room, like, <laughs> <laughs> Phil was the only one laughing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but it was enough motivation awesome. to keep me going. Yeah. And it, 
like a little bit i was kind of practicing like trying to hold court like trying to keep the attention of yeah. multiple people you know what i mean unashamedly right you know right. and just fucking well if you can do that at a party you can fucking do it on stage because i can't do that at a party like even still like i i just would feel uncomfortable i don't know but when i get on stage i become like a different person which i didn't know because that's the time and place for it i think yeah exactly uh, every that's what makes me feel awkward about it like if i sit in the mirror and then like okay oh, this is yeah. my joke and i'm gonna tell it like i'm gonna tell mm -hmm. an audience and i'm like this yeah. is so weird it's it's yeah. not like natural like this is when right we start talking and that's how stand-up is supposed to be i mean like and i've learned a lot of that from kill tony is like it just needs to be like you're not talking at the audience, you're talking to the audience. Right. Like it needs to be like as more conversational as it seems on stage, the better mm -hmm. your performance. Yeah. I've definitely noticed and that that's on hard. Kill Tony. You can see mm -hmm. like the people, you know, one person's joke might be funnier, but the way that the next person tells that joke and how they interact with everybody and their sure. body language and everything and yeah. it makes people laugh for yeah. some reason. Yeah, I just watched one the other day where this guy came up st on stage and he had his notes and he just was so nervous and he just bombed. He couldn't even get us through his notes. And then Jeremiah Watkins was like, let me see your notes and let me do your jokes. And he did. And he got laughs off of them oh because it was God. actually really funny writing. Right. But the way this guy was performing it, it was like, yeah. it wasn't working, you know? So it's, yeah, it's all about. There's writer's jobs too, though. You True. know, if that happens to be your strength, right. I think mine is the opposite. I think I'm more of a performer. I'm more of a, yeah. And no matter what I do. And after these parties, the next morning I'm like. What kind of fucking asshole is yelling dick jokes at a bunch of hippies <laughs> that don't want to hear it at all? But I'm making myself laugh yeah. and Phil's laughing and there's like two other homies yeah. you know, that aren't like embarrassed and right. scared to say something. Yeah. It'll be hard. I mean, I was thinking about what you said about getting going up by yourself and in this town, it's just not that many options. Like, I know. That's more than issue. likely, you're going to run into somebody, you know? Totally. Yeah. And even... But, they're supportive though, man. And this is like a super supportive community. Everybody told me that before I started and they're like, just come to some shows and see what it's like. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can get a little hairy, but like for the most part, it's very supportive. Have you had to deal with hecklers yet? Oh, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I actually... Was it hard at first? No, that was the problem. I um, I hate hecklers so much that I, be hard. I came at them so I hard. I've had people walk out on my show when... Like I, this lady heckled me. I was telling a joke about, um, about basically it's about a youth pastor that got arrested for molesting a friend of mine when we were 12. Jesus. And I was telling that joke and this lady like stood up and started screaming, not all youth pastors are bad. <laughs> like lady, you're defending a rapist right now. You realize that and she yeah. just stormed out and yeah, it was, and that was bad. But then there's been other ones like, man, recently, uh, well, and I've changed my ways actually since this last time. This guy was heckling real bad and I just went off on him like on stage and then I got off stage, walked to the bar and off the stage I go, I looked him right in the eye, I go, you're a piece of shit. And he goes, me? I'm like, yeah. And then him and his whole group left and there was like this big hole in the back of the bar where there was people before and they had <laughs> left. It's like, that's not the desired outcome. I gotta not be so mean to them, you yeah. know? They don't realize the... You know how how much it fucks you up when you're like in the zone and you're getting yelled at shit. Right. So I learned to like start being a little nicer to them, and that's and that's, I'm having more with fun them with them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I fuck with them, but in a fun way, and it's been getting like laughs opposed to the crowd just being like, <gasps> yeah, you're, like right. sucking the air I out think the room. Audiences love that shit. Sometimes, you know, yeah. They, but yeah. It, it's all about execution. Yeah, like finesse, just enough finesse, just enough force, and like the right words put together doesn't right. hurt. But I, was, I was there last night, and I saw you like <laughs> just say I a couple it. things to a couple people, yeah. and it was just like, no, fuck you, and just or maybe not quite that bad. <laughs> no, but, I didn't say fuck you, but or you told the dude he was terrible. Yeah, but, well, that guy. I'll tell you. Let me you tell you about him. The worst. Yeah. <laughs> well, because. He came in there all wrong. First of all, an hour before the show, we're all sitting there talking, and this guy comes up, and he asks us if there's a comedy show going on. We're like, yeah. And then and he's like, I've done comedy before. I was like, well, sign up. And Because like, he just kept talking shit like, this guy doesn't look funny. He doesn't look funny. She doesn't look funny. We're like, okay, we don't look funny. If you're funny, fucking sign up. Trial by fire. And he was like, I've done it before. I'm like, then sign up. And he just, and he's like, well, I'm sorry for what's about to happen to you guys. And I just chuckled, like thinking he was being like silly or something. He goes, no, I'm serious. I'm sorry for what's about to happen to you. 
I was really? like, did I just get threatened somehow, like before the th- show? And then he ends up coming, he, uh, coming and signing up. He signed up last, and then during like the f- some of the first few comics, he came up and said, "These guys aren't funny. We need somebody funny to go up. Can I go up next?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my god, the balls on this guy!" And then he goes up and he fucking bombs. He was terrible, and he was just a dick from beginning to end. You know, so. I and I should not have done what I did, but I did go off on him and sucked the air out of the room. Like I roasted him once, good. I should have left it at that, you know. There was people defending him and shit. I know. Like, oh, he's not that bad. Yeah, I was like, you're I was like the yeah. worst comic I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just I know, and I got oh, in trouble good. a little bit for that. I thought I it was just, fucking hilarious. Good. I mean, I, in hindsight, I think it's still funny too. I Especially just with wanna... context, now it's way funnier. Oh yeah, because he deserved it. Right. Dude. Like, that's what the crowd didn't know, and I didn't really have time to explain everything. So I just came across like a dick. But <laughs> he was really the dick, dude. But I don't really care right. what I come across. I mean, I don't want to be known as like a dick on stage, but I'm not. And like people, I'm usually pretty, pretty happy up there. Right. But I don't know. Some some things get out of hand, man. I should have I should have stopped while I was ahead, but I just kept beating that dead horse because he was just made me so angry. <laughs> he had sh- the shit tagline that he kept using, and then oh, yeah. went way too long. Yeah. And like three times, you were like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. And finally, they just turned on the music yeah. all loud. Yeah. <laughs> he was just like still going. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He wants to act like he's done it before. He doesn't even know how to see a light. I mean, I saw. Justin, the guy that runs the show with me, like lied him like two or three different times. Right. And if he's done it before, if he's as funny as he says he is, then he should know what the fuck a light is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was awful. That's whatever. Crazy. His name's Arthur. And, it t- and then I found out um, he is, let's see, my, my boss uh, messaged me this last night because he wasn't too happy. And he, he said, uh, you never know who's in the crowd. And the reason why is because that guy that I did that to is the editor of Essential Durango magazine. <laughs> EssentialDurango.com. It's an area magazine. And he's the founder and publisher. Mm. And oh, shit. so we're waiting for a bad article, maybe. But whatever. About what, though? An open mic night? Yeah. I, and publicity. you got roasted by that's a just comic? What, yeah, yeah, I know. But that's what the guy, like, the guy that runs the show that does the lights, and he's worried about all that. I'm mm. not, I don't. I'm not worried about that because it's part of the show. Right. And yeah, and I understand I went too far, but it was yeah, just a little. Just a little. Was fine. It wasn't yeah. that bad. No, and he was still there when I left. Mm-hmm. So I didn't leave. He obviously, yeah, didn't break his heart where he yeah. had to go home. He was, yeah. but and I, I didn't I dis- call anybody a faggot. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't hear it once. No, nope. and that's, there was a lot of like in 2019. That's I think when you cross the line. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of <laughs> gay happiness going on. Like it seems like an awesome, diverse crowd. It is. You know what I mean? Then that and scares just, like, me about so the ranch. supportive. Is it so supportive? It doesn't seem it's, like a supportive place. It's more supportive than it seems. Well, I, that I, back yeah. room was. The rest of the bar could oh, give well, a yeah, fuck. The, the bar, yeah, the bar area, they don't care. Right. They could care less. But like, we're, if they're back there watching and sitting down, yeah, they're usually very supportive. And uh, I, I, I was nervous to go to the ranch at first, too, because I started at the Steaming Bean back when that was there mm-hmm. underneath Irish Embassy. And um, that show is like, that's... I think I told you last night, mm-hmm. but that's where I recommend y'all tr- go for your first time. That was my thoughts. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because, I mean, it's a bigger crowd, but they're all there in a little small room with low ceilings. It's dark. Those stages lit up nice, and they're super supportive. Yeah, There's that's, not people screaming and laughing in the actually, back. Actually, I don't know. Not screaming and laughing in the back, but I did get heckled there a couple times. Yeah. But whatever. You yeah, can, that's just, I think, part of it. Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. You just got to acknowledge them. Like, that's the thing. You can't just, like... Let it slide, <laughs> or else it seems like they win, kind of. Well, sure, you just keep going. Yeah, you know, you yeah. Just ignore them. <laughs> just like, act like you're not getting yelled yeah. at. You fuck it. Everybody else is like, you're not even going to say shit, bro? Mm-hmm. You're going to let this motherfucker get away with this? And that's when the crowd loves it, too. Is right. When you just, like... When, when they're tired of it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when they're, like, shut... When, they, when they're thinking shut up, and then you say shut up, dude, you get applause breaks for that right. shit. It's fun. Yeah. It's rude. It's super so rude, rude to do that. Well, it's yeah. against the rules. That's not what we signed up for. Yeah. Like, just... Last night, I I went to see a comedy show, and I have kind of a hard time like getting lost in it because I'm analyzing it so much. Right, and I'm just like, oh, I like what you did there, uh-huh. instead yeah. of just like laughing how I should. Sure, you know, even I watched uh, what is it, Elephant in the Room, Patrice O'Neill's special. Last okay, night. dude, it is so goddamn funny. <laughs> yeah, and he goes after. 
the audience so hard, making chicks so uncomfortable. Yeah. And then pulls them out like every fucking time. Yeah, you know dude. what I mean? It's he like so digs a hole brilliant. and gets out of it. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. He's and really good. Just at that. says some shit that you would never say in public. Know. You know? And I he's, know. It's beautiful. And he probably would never even say that in public. It's right. Because like you kind of be. I mean, whether you mean to or not, you kind of become. You take on a stage persona when you get up there. Yeah. And I, you know, and. I think that's interesting. Even this, like, I, I'm definitely an exaggerated version of myself, with especially when it's just me and Phil. Yeah. Because, you know, with the guests, I'm getting to know somebody generally, which right. I really enjoy. Right. But, like, when it just gets to be me and Phil, like, I just recently had a chick decide she no longer to, wanted to hang out with me because of some comments on the podcast. <laughs> I haven't told you this yet. Uh, oh, I think I you mentioned that last yeah. night. That's so cool. I know exactly what, what you're talking oh, about. Oh, I know too. But... Yeah. <laughs> I was, oh my God. Yeah, I got a text yesterday. Can we hang out later? I need to talk. And oh, I was just no. like, is this something that's going to be quick? Or? <laughs> and then she just sent me this fucking long oh, ass, just like, shit. you're a fucking asshole and I don't want to be with that. What is so she, harsh. Did she hear it when you aired it? Oh yeah. The yeah. podcast. And then she texted you when she heard it. Yeah. It oh, seemed that God. way. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I said I almost fucked a pregnant girl on Christmas, and she was in California with her family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't incriminate yourself, yeah. bro. Well, it was a bit exaggerated. Easier not than a said whole lot. Yeah, but right. I'm just trying to make if Phil If she was laugh. a little yeah, yeah. hotter, he would have fucked that pregnant chick. <laughs> How pregnant was she? <laughs> like eight months. Oh, man. I would say eight months. <laughs> Definitely not three, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, noticeable yeah i told phil another story about i had my nephew with me and i got some attention from a very very attractive beautiful girl and uh -huh. just like our eyes caught and i was like oh my god you know? <laughs> and then i told that on here and she's like so i don't know what we're doing here like relationship wise <laughs> like i can't be in this open like you just talk about fucking other people and my friends know that we're hanging yeah. out and i mean i can see what that'd be awkward for totally. but but i mean come on but eventually right, you're gonna find someone that is cool with it right well and right when it started i knew it, i was pretty sure it wasn't gonna be like it wasn't the one you know okay, what i mean yeah and i just got out of like a five-year thing and breaking up with her was the hardest thing i ever had to do like breaking a girl's heart after yeah. five well, you guys, years you guys that were you starting love, a life together you know yeah. you just moved in to a house totally like, uh, oh wow you shared a house there for wow. a second brian was like i think i'm gonna move to farmington and become a mechanic like start a family i was no. sold like, dude, dude. <laughs> no. you're gonna be so unhappy what are you right, talking we yeah. moved out of farmington to follow our dreams this yeah. is what friends are for yeah it's like, that's yeah damn right no that's awesome put this on your tongue <laughs> <laughs> you think about this, goddammit. Oh, that's great. We'll lock you in the room for 12 hours and you can think about your life. Oh, that's great. You're going down the wrong road. <laughs> that'd be a fucking that's lifty like, again. That's a best friend right there. <laughs> but basically, yeah, I knew it wasn't going to work out. And then one night we had kind of a serious talk. And mm. I was like, I'm just not ready to be in anything like gnarly relationship wise. Like, you can only count on me so much. I am really trying to get my shit together here. Right. And I really haven't figured out my life yet since I'm a single person, you know? Yeah. And right about then was like, all right, I'm going to let's start. I'm just going to start letting it fly on the podcast. Like, whatever comes to mind, fuck, yeah. fuck filtering anything about Good. pussy, especially. Because I'm horny, man. And pretty <laughs> girls catch my attention. I don't there know what go. to tell you. Yeah. You know? And if I was in a committed relationship, I wouldn't talk about, I almost fucked a girl on Christmas. A little duh, but, yeah. But you obviously didn't give a shit too much. It, Maybe it subconsciously. Yeah. I think it had to do with how much I drank last night. Yeah. So it's just Because even when I was like... You know, this isn't going to be forever. But when somebody's like, yeah, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. It still yeah. kind of hurts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Uh, there's part of me that's like, Whoo. and part of me that's like, damn. Just feel bad. It's not good to hear yeah. from anybody. Just right. like, I I don't want to spend time with you. Do you know the people that own that company right there? Dirty? Yeah. Yeah, they live here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. One of my buddies is friends with them, I guess. Yeah. I thought it was like. A nationwide country. It's not the original, uh, the original crew, though. It's one guy now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just Holden Welch. Yeah. Okay. Holden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Blonde, blonde fella. hair? Mm -hmm. Was he Hulk Holden for Halloween? Probably. Yeah, that sounds, sounds, <laughs> sounds exactly right. like Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Guaranteed. Yeah, the kid's hilarious, dude. Yeah, he gets him. hammered. Yes, he, he gets does. very drunk if it's a guy I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah. It's him. He's funny, though. I yeah, love that yeah. guy. Yeah. He's a good dude, and I really I like him. I didn't know him. that was his company. Mm -hmm. That was all Instagram video of him the other day, like jumping off. Baker's Bridge? No, it was... He was skateboarding off of the stairway from, like, the fish aquarium 
onto oh, like College is. Drive. Oh yeah. You know that intersection uh-huh. right there? Okay, it's yeah. By the, na- the nature's Nature, store. Drango Natural Grocers. Yeah. Right where that fish parking lot yeah. is, he was like skateboarding and ollieing off the fucking the stairs. Upper parking lot. Upper parking lot, like down by the intersection, and all this snow was around him. It was just, he's a fucking. How, how high guy. was it? I don't know. A good. It's probably like five, six yeah, feet. Five or oh, six sweet. feet. Yeah. Well, and he just kept doing it over and over. That was the video of him just <laughs> doing it and crashing. Fuck! <laughs> yeah. Going back up, doing it and crashing. Fuck! So does he even have, like, a real job, or does he just do that? Uh, I bet he has something that he yeah. makes money, but I know he was... That'd be dumb. He makes all the stickers for Bubba's boards, or at least oh, he did for a while. North County? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he has a sticker maker and shit, obviously. Okay. And, um... Yeah, he's just chasing it. And I think he's got a solid idea. At first, he threw out, like, so many different things. And, uh-huh. I, you know, you have to have a lot of seed money to do that. And I shit doesn't think. just fly off the shelves, you know, when you're a brand new company. No, dude, definitely. So this winter, he he just did beanies. and Just beanies. And they fucking, they're gone. That was a good you idea. I mean? just, yeah. And all these hoodies, like, you basically had to know him. Give him 60 bucks and he'd make you a custom hoodie. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I've got a couple of them. Because cool. I like supporting my homies, you For know? For sure. And if I'm going to wear a brand, like, might as well be somebody. And it's cool, too. Like, it is I, fucking I really dope. like it, dude. Like the logo. Yeah, I like it, too. It's yeah. a very easy, easily brandable logo, mm-hmm. too. Absolutely. Like, and dirty. just one this, word yeah, is I good. Mean, it's the name and everything. Mm-hmm. It's brandable. Mm-hmm. And the air freshener. Their, yeah, their motto is "Get dirty, stay fresh." That's awesome. That's pretty sick. Oh, that Sweet. is sick. I'm a fan. I'm not. I always wanted to be like that cool, where cool ideas come to me. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I'm just the goofy guy. Yeah. Know? I just well embrace it. T- That's what I'm starting to grow into. Good. It's just like you're good at this, and and a lot of the shit I say on the podcast, especially when I'm just trying to make Phil laugh, and he knows when I'm telling the truth or not because yeah. we've known each other since basically our memories. You know, for real, like that's yeah. like our care. parents went to school together. Holy so shit! So we've known each other forever. That's awesome. So he knows when I'm lying, but mm-hmm. he'll go with the story on the podcast. <laughs> if it's funny, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then people listen and they're like, "Did you really do that?" Yeah. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. But did you giggle? Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. I bet there's definitely people that think I'm a fucking monster, and <laughs> chicks that think I'm a fucking misogynistic pig, oh, especially after it. just telling what I told. Right. And, uh-huh. Or gay. Or gay. <laughs> Dude, I, I oh, talk yeah. about yeah, sucking dick so much. <laughs> just because it makes Phil laugh mostly. It's funny. It makes it me is laugh. funny, dude. And shit, if you, oh, if you can't make a dick sucking joke about yourself, maybe you should try a dick. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Exactly. Maybe you're gay. Because, and I got nothing against it, obviously. I have gay friends. They're beautiful people. And ob- that's how I meet some of the hottest girls I've ever met was my dude, couple gay, buddies. gay friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you know Sean Mo. Sean Mo? Sean Mo, yeah, yeah, he's been on the podcast before, and oh, cool. He uh, gay as shit. He sent us. <laughs> <laughs> he sent us a, a message that said that we need to have a segment called Balloon Knot Corner or Phil and Brian's Balloon Knot Corner. More butthole talk. He requested more butthole talk. Yes. <laughs> okay. And wow, he, he maybe that'll a, be a specialty for his episode. Uh, I don't know. Dude, we'll fall down a rabbit hole for yeah. sure. He, if, he left us speechless. I can't even he? keep up with him. Man. He's a beast. Yeah, he's, I'm, I'm, he's I'm gonna have to listen to his episode. Yeah, he's, he's hilarious. Funny. He is hilarious, and he's a big comedy nerd too. Totally. When he found out I did it, he he was like, "Well, he was <laughs> fucked up on something," but he got way overexcited about it yeah. and talked to me for like 20 minutes because he so wants different. to do it too. Does you he? Know what I mean? Yeah, I, I guarantee he it. would be good at it. Totally. I, I see that yeah and intelligent he he is smart he's offensive but intelligent enough to make it classy you know what i yeah. mean so you can't even be bad at it you're like i would have never Dude, he, fucking and thought he's of that huge too that yeah. helps yeah. with stage presence i think a little bit he's like a totally. giant kevin smith he is that's exactly right and yeah he has a podcast too called the whiskey reel oh anybody cool. listening to this should check it out the whiskey reel um they watch movies and listen to albums and just you know talk about the movie they're fucking uber nerds okay so they just like shit they're super balls deep into <laughs> okay and one of them was a music producer in like la so he's one of like, the guys he works with one of the guys on the podcast oh okay yeah and uh he just knows so much about like music and used to be in like a musician as well you know what i mean but they're uber nerds and when you're listening to it you're like god damn yeah like i i only understand like three quarters of this but i'm fascinated you know it's a really good podcast okay i'm have to check it out and they got they're like 10, 15 years older than us, so they are definitely smarter than us. You well, know? yeah. So and when I listen to have more just life 
experience. Right. Yeah. So when I listen to it, I'm like, God damn, we sound dumb. Like, <laughs> nah, dude. <laughs> what the fuck is that? My phone? That's you. Oh, I should probably turn my phone on vibrate. Off. Well, I'm usually the one that what does My that. phone just never rings, so I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> like, literally never. <laughs> I kind of enjoy it. I feel uh, that. So you just recently got back from California, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, I got family down there. Went and visited um, my family in Huntington Beach. My grandma, she's she's getting old. Yeah. And losing losing uh, her marbles a little bit. So I'm so, experiencing that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Well, with my grandma. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Probably just a stoner. <laughs> Speaking of, dude, do you mind if I uh, rip it. that? Yeah, definitely. 100%. Sweet. But yeah, no, we went out there to visit the family, but while we were there, we went to the comedy store. We went to Kill Tony. I signed up. Nice. And no luck, Thank obviously. Right. Yeah. But uh, then we went to the improv, saw Ben Bailey. So I, like I love him. Ben Bailey. He's yeah. great. And he like said, he like stood there and talked with Kat and I for like 10 minutes after really? the show. Yeah, cool. it was really cool. And, and uh, it was just cool to see like Hollywood in a, from a comedic point of view. Cause mm -hmm. I only been there once when like nine years ago and, and it was hard at, like, to get a it, idea for what it's really like. Yeah. And I was only, I just drove through it like mm -hmm. really the other time. So, but like walking around and going to the comedy clubs, it's like, man, this is where I fucking want to be. Yeah, if it wasn't LA and California, I would want to live out yeah. there. You know, like oh, I'd like to move out there, but I just fuck. Yeah. Well, I, I want to I now deal with all that. I know, dude, it's a pain in the ass. I'm, I'm from Atlanta though. So I'm used to like bad traffic, like really bad traffic. That doesn't bother me, but the thing is now that my grandma's getting like older and dealing with that, and and she takes care of my uncle who's mentally handicapped, also has been like the doctors said he wouldn't live to eighteen, and he's fifty now, Jeez. over fifty, yeah, That's crazy. and 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 now the lady taking care of him is starting to lose it, so I. I I just would like to be closer to be able to help if mm -hmm. possible, and so we're thinking maybe go out there in like a and year. And you just happen to be an aspiring half. comedian. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it just happens to be the second, best case scenario the first sure. or second best place in the country to do it. You're not moving uh, to like bum West fuck Coast Kansas. Comedy. Yeah, I yeah, know, right? If they were in Kansas, I'd probably be like, yeah, I'll, I'll fly in and visit <laughs> right. you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom, I gotta move to L.A. <laughs> yeah. It does, it just kind of like, the way my wife says it is uh, feeds two birds with one hand. Totally. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. that I'll be able to go after the comedy career and be able to be there in case Help she needs fan. us. Yeah. And just see, be closer to my cousins and stuff that I never see. Right. That'd be That's cool. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. That's an opportunity. It and is. It sounds like you're about to seize it. So I, I, uh, yeah. I'm just trying to save up as much money beforehand. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm trying to be patient a little bit and kind of get better at stand up in the meanwhile, too. Before I go out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it wouldn't make sense to go out there after only doing stand up for one year. I mean, I don't know. That's debatable. Some people go out there and start. Yeah. You know, like Tony Hinchcliffe actually went out there and started at the comedy store. And the good thing about doing that is you're immediately thrown into the belly of the beast. So yeah. it's like you either grow fast or you probably fucking quit. Yeah, pressure you makes know? diamonds, dog. Yeah, dude. That, <laughs> damn right. Exactly. That's exactly right. So, I mean, it's intimidating, but it's, it might be the smartest move. I don't know. There's a lot more competition out there. Yeah. But competition is good damn right and not not only competition but you're gonna get diverse crowds you're not gonna see the same people every week which is whatever but at least your material it's hitting a lot of the ears for the first time and there's every and night gotta be a lot more places for open mic nights oh there places are to get dude we'll be going to like all I mean, rooms and shit <coughs> you have you're in a town room, of sixteen thousand people you know like, yes exactly do the same thing <coughs> every was, week i had a um uh, like I was talking to somebody yesterday and and he told me I'm doing 10 minutes next week. I'm featuring for my buddy Elliot Weber who nice. went up last night. He's doing his tour launch tomorrow he was good, or man. next week. Yeah, he's hilarious, dude. He's doing this tour launch and um so he's going to do 20 minutes next week and he and I'm going with him on his first leg of the tour to Phoenix in February. So he's having me do 10 minutes up front. And I told the guy that, you know, who's putting on the show, I was like, but, you know, I was really planning on working on the 10 minutes I'm going to use in Phoenix for the for that 10 minutes. But it's shit that people in Durango have heard before. And he said, don't worry about that. He's like, you got to tell the jokes more than once to like or more than Definitely. more than 10 times gotta, probably at this point to get to get yeah, better. It's at just it. like anything else. Figure out the right wording, mm -hmm. figure out the pauses, figure out everything. But it just feels weird because I know I'm telling these jokes to people that have heard them before. And at the same so at the same time, we don't want to bore the audience. 
and but like but are, i don't know ultimately for the career wise it's better to practice it yeah. but know? is that material it's weird not getting better like is no it, it is it's definitely it, you know? yeah it is it is it's the same 10 minutes i opened with for kostaki okay and he said that was good so nice. I, i'm pretty confident in that 10 minutes you know and there's awesome. got mm-hmm. there's something to be it's said a long time man even yeah, some of the people on kill tony oh, 48 seconds they're like god has it been damn. a minute yet yeah dude it's just like whoo I oh, I did a I did ten minutes at the Starlight Lounge on New Year's Eve. That was the longest was ten that? minutes of my <laughs> life. It was awful. Dude. How was the crowd? The crowd was just like there was like three or pro- probably three or four people listening. Uh huh. And I knew that because every time I told a joke, I heard like three or four laughs. But other than that, I couldn't even hear myself speak because the whole front of the bar it was like Moe's, uh-huh. you know, like uh, it was the whole front was just packed to the walls. I mean, it was New Year's Eve. Everybody's getting hammered. Oh, Nobody shit. gave a shit yeah. about have a the guy talking. I, mean, I was going through a PA, yeah. but like, but like no like spotlight on, or there was a spotlight too, but it was just like more people laughing at me. Like I s- literally saw people looking at me and laughing at me. <laughs> it's and like, what's like, that fucking noise? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that fucking coming. idiot. Clown suit. Like, yeah, dude. It was just, it was probably one of the worst shows I've had, but it was, I was laughing the whole rest of the night though, because like bombing is, I mean, what they say in, in, in the podcast all the time is like bombing is the best way to learn. Yeah. As, as much as I'm scared of going up, like, I know that I'm going to bomb and I'm like looking forward to bombing to like <laughs> learn you'll from that. Feel, you'll feel impenetrable after that, yeah. dude. Because once you go up sta- on stage it's and just bomb. just like anything else that's ego stripping like jiu-jitsu yeah. or yeah, you know, sure. anything else. is You got to get through that. And once that's over, then it's, it's thinking about it that's the hard thing. It's yeah. never as bad like in the moment as it seems like it would be. Like if like thinking about bombing makes me cringe or makes me want to cringe but then when i'm in the m- middle of it it's like yeah right. whatever dude this i used is, to cringe is almost school, over because i was such a class clown and i was constantly trying to make people laugh and when my jokes in class would bomb and nobody would laugh <laughs> you'd feel yeah. so shitty yeah like, i just can tap back see into that i feeling. was always too scared to even i always had jokes come to my head but i was too scared to even say them out loud and then i remember in eighth grade one time dude i actually said a joke out loud but kind of under my breath and then the actual class clown heard it and he repeated it and it got a huge laugh <laughs> and i was like shit and it's just like i never had i don't know i was always too shy motherfucker I, I was, stole your joke he dog. stole it dude. it was the first stole time your moment yeah i was just so shy you know and stand-ups help with that too yeah. Me and brian were always the kids outside in the hallway Brian, Phil, like outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sitting out there with our We killed when we were together, but they <laughs> oh, split us up in like third grade and both of learned. us had to experience they bombing. Yeah. Quick. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it was just fucking. Yeah, two of our teachers conspired together to get us to switch that period no. so that we wouldn't be in the same class at the same time. Wow. Because we were such a nuisance. I get well, it, probably dude. be a pain in the ass for a teacher. Dude, yeah, of course. Definitely. Make a teacher quit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> make oh, that yeah. poor bitch want to go home yeah i think we actually did make a teacher quit in like third grade possibly. no that'd be great she she quit it was like after that year yeah it was like her first year teaching bro and we were savages she retired from teaching after that i'm ho- i don't think so or maybe went to I a different school, went to a different left. school but okay yeah we're so egot- egotistical that we you want to think, think because that, us. yeah we were such bad maybe, maybe it was we didn't yeah. hurt third grade you could just I had my no story. rules shirt on. Remember no rules? Yeah, that's what I do. I had the kid with the spiky hair and the yo-yo. <laughs> yep, dude, so that was, was a super kid, baggy dude. Jig- what was it? Jinkos. Jinkos. Yeah, Jinkos. J and C O. And apparently they're coming back. I heard that. Like next year or something, or this year now. It's ridiculous. I can't yeah. fall victim to that no, fad again. I'm not gonna do that again. Yeah. <laughs> no, I need function, dog. I'm a yeah. working adult, <laughs> and I'm also trying to get pussy. So like, yeah, dude. I don't like tight pants, but. The super baggy, I might show off the like junk every Dickies now and then. Was really cool in Farmington when we were growing up. The Dickies, Dickies were yeah, super baggy Dickies, super baggy pants, like hanging off your ass. Yeah, I, I've always I always wore like growing up Dink, uh, Dickies shorts. I like those still to this Me day. Too. Actually, they're cozy. Yeah, they're comfortable. Jean shorts are goofy as shit. I don't too. like jean shorts. My dad though. rocks them. Like, I one day we we're at the lake and I go, "Hey, dad," because I didn't know we were going to the lake. He just came and got me and we went to the fucking lake. And I'm like, hey, Dad, you got a swimsuit? Because you knew you were coming to the lake, right? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, shorts in the back. It's like, where? He's like, there's one pair of shorts. I'm like, these fucking jean shorts? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, they're shorts, aren't they? Yeah. Like, 
I'm gonna sink, but yeah, yeah, yeah sure. They're heavy as fuck, dude. I actually I have a uh, pair I still, them. but like, I hate them, dude. It's like cotton pulling apart for me, like wet uh, jeans. Oh like, yeah. In the snow, I'll put my snow boots on and roll my jeans up mm. when I'm just going outside to get shit. Because when I come back in, and the bottom of my jeans are all wet and like ugh, and wet socks. Ugh, yeah, that's, socks all, that's the worst. Feeling, yeah, man. definitely. It's rough. <laughs> <sighs> yeah man what do you like all the snow up here or do you not like it i'm not snowboarding this year i didn't buy a pass really and me so neither I'm fucking hating it just because it's, it's my a pain driveway in the ass, is a dude. shit show if man. you're not using like, it like for fun dude it is a pain and in i the got ass. that that camper trailer this summer my grandparents gave it to me and there was no level spot to put it yeah and i was gonna find a better spot for it but then it snowed and that's where it's at. That's so where it's like, at. You have to move, maneuver around it. God, you're gonna it's slam in while it. you're sliding. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Snowed so much compared to last year. We last, need it. That's last the year thing. was shitty. The yeah. earth needs it. Yeah, I, that's, it was that's fucking true. dry and You scary saw how low year. that river was this summer. You couldn't even float down. It. Our state almost burned down. Yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, fuck. I'm yeah. about that. Fucking California too. California that really did. Bad. That was gnarly. California was worse, I think. Definitely. Probably a, a lot. A lot. Yeah, it was. I think well, it's just drier out there in general. Two I think of it was over a hundred thousand acres, and, but and that's such dense populated area. Mm. Like where we're at, it's you know the firefighters have a huge chance of stopping it from hitting houses because they can sure. maneuver it in other places. So it's just burning out in yeah. the forest. That's what blew and my they mind. They did a great job at that. That's yeah. No houses got like, burned why, out. Why haven't they fucking? Put the fire out yet? It's, like, it's not that easy, right? They're just man- moving moving it out the other way. So just it's trying to con- contain. So it that like a, that's how no houses burnt down. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, how did so many thousands of acres burn and they not just, a house got burned down? They, I, they that, build these lines, the the hot shots that go out there, basically right next to the fire. Okay, and then they chop at the ground and get all the weeds pushed back into the fire and then it's a fire it's line. Just, that makes sense it's okay just dirt yeah. this way and then they'll take bulldozers and bulldoze so there's a giant line between fire and tree okay and then they just do that around the whole fire and make like a giant campground okay and but they have you got to be strategic about it and kind of sure. push it back into the forest where there's no houses and that's like, a tough job oh, man yeah, especially damn. those flames are 100 feet tall you yeah know, like I open up my Damn. wood stove sometimes, and I'm like, Whoo, "Yeah, fucking hot. Right. yeah, I've done that." Gotta have yeah. a welding glove to put wood in there and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred foot flames. It's like, jeez, barely get. Hey, we don't get fires in back east. There's no fires. It's too wet. It's wet as fuck. It's wet as you fuck. You guys got yeah. rust and bugs. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Georgia. Georgia. But I, I, I was born in in Marietta, Georgia, and That's then. Wet. Yeah, just wet and. But then, like when I was one, we moved. To, my my dad got transferred. He worked for IBM to uh dc and mm. so we lived in montgomery county maryland for nine years and then when i was 10 i moved back to georgia and so i just tell people i was born and raised in atlanta because technically i was right. i wouldn't say i was raised before the age of 10 like atlanta more than dc yeah oh definitely sure. yeah that's more my home i mean both places are pretty fucking ghetto is there a big no comedy what. scene out there atlanta yeah. and dc uh yeah atlanta does have a good a good comedy scene I've heard some, um, I heard they do this night at, I forget which club it is in Atlanta, but they, it's called Keys Night, mm. <laughs> where comic goes up, and then if someone, like, people can, like, if they're not liking the comic, they can take out their keys and just start jingling them in front of the comic until he gets off the stage just like like a loud heckling kind of but with keys i bet that's pretty, that seems like a hard room i bet right that's there. fucking ruthless in atlanta yeah that's like, i've heard it is cat williams walking that yeah. motherfucker and be like put your keys down yeah <laughs> i bet it is dude Took i've never respect. done stand up there i can't wait to go back and visit and do so we're just like how they're balls like deep it. and outcast Oh, 100%. I, got I was. Cat I was. That too, right there. Yeah. Like, so I, was, yeah. I lived here and I was fucking balls deep yeah, in Outcast. Hell so yeah. I can't oh, imagine actually being yeah. in the land I, I quote Outcast in my act right? a couple nice. times. Yeah, because I talk about the difference between like hip hop back then. Like growing up in Atlanta with real hip hop, like Outcast mm-hmm. and real beats and real lyrics that mean something. And then like today, and I quote an Outcast song and then I quote Kanye West song like Poop, Poopity Scoop. Poopity scoopity whoop like that's a hit today. Whereas back then the lyrics actually meant something. Right. <laughs> I'm so disconnected from mainstream music. Like I gave Kanye so I work out in the middle of nowhere. I drive just hours a day. 
one day I was like, there's got to be something to this guy. Like, people fucking love Kanye. There's not. I listened to it for hours. Fucking nothing, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nothing. Maybe one song where I was like, oh, that's kind of catchy. I loved his old just, music, man. I, I'm a when hater. You, yeah. I'm not a fan I either. I hate Kanye more honest. than I hate Raiders fans. <laughs> Whoa. Maybe not quite. I fucking hate Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, dude, I just, I don't appreciate him anymore. Like, I mean, his, li- his, um, his lyrics even used to be decent, but his beats used to be so fucking sick. He still is a good producer when he wants. Right. But then he just decides to put out songs like that poop song. I'm like, why the fuck? And it was like a hit single and catchy. Just because it's Kanye. It's I, gotta... Yeah, it's just because it's Kanye, I think, is really what it is. Like, he can get away with anything. Well, it bothers but... me because it feels like he's fucking with people. It feels I feel like I feel brainwashed like... and he's yes. just like poop <laughs> yeah yeah he's, he's like, like let's see if we fuck you let's see, if, yeah. Yeah, let's see if we can get millions of people to sing poop over and over again oh wait i can okay yeah cool. i'm just waiting for him to put out like the worst shoe ever like i'm not a yeezy fan or whatever but people seem to think they're stylish yeah you know what i mean they're paying two thousand bucks for them at least Je- they yeah, were right crazy yeah, yeah. jesus They're like four hundred dollars for a t-shirt that's ridiculous i would never dude but out that's, of principle that's the kind of power that a man has to have to put out a poop song. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I and mean, you, you gotta kind of respect it. Put it up here for now. Okay. We'll take care of it later. Sounds good. You want another one? I'll take it. Sure. Thanks, man. Delicious. Here on the Green Light Weekend, we like to drink a few beers. We like to smoke some marijuana. Sounds good to me, and dude. Dave brought us some Kratom tea. Kratom. Yeah. Kratom, Kratom. Kratom. Tomato, tomato. Kratom. That's how they <laughs> Never say heard it. that one. That's how they... Or what's... uh. Alexander Hamilton, is the, what? isn't that his name? I have the no fucking psychotel- idea. The psychedelic guy Alexander that's on Vice. Hamilton? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yes, that is his name. Yeah, Alexander yes. Hamilton. Why does he call it? Does he call it Ketum? He says when he went to Thailand, they called it Kratom. Or not Kratom, uh, Kratom. Yeah. Okay. In Indonesia, they call it Ketum. Like K-H-E-T-U-M. Yeah. He was on Joe Rogan. Well, this is America. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Surprised we don't call know who he is. Kratom. Yeah. Kratom. It's Kratom. I've been anyway, into this. Shit I've heard so many jokes for years. Movies. I mean, I I used this is this says Tanaga Kava right here. It's a kava bar in uh, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, where I used to work, and um, and we sell it like we sell it in tea form like this. That's where mm-hmm. I learned to make it, and then we sell like extract, and we mix in the extract with some kava. Are you familiar with kava at all? Uh, yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. It's just like for anybody listening, it's a root of a plant, mm-hmm. and it's from like uh, the South Pacific, and they just basically grind it up into a pulp, and then they strain it, and they mix in water, and then they strain it, and it's just kind of like, I mean, it's a natural. They have like anti-anxiety kind of thing. There's molecules that bind to the the GABA receptors in kava, at least. Yes. Yeah. And they're not exactly like Valium and Xanax it's, and stuff, but it reacts with the same. But it reacts receptors. similarly. They're yeah. very similar, Opioid and they receptors. kind of That's yeah, right. yeah. And the same uh, thing with kratom. kratom does that too. Kratom, kratom. acts on um, different mu mu mu, mu opioid, opioid receptors. receptors. Yes, yeah. and 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 that's why people think it's an opiate, which it's not at all. Like even like cheese. Like if you eat cheese, if you're craving cheese and you eat cheese, that it produces it, it attaches to the mu opioid receptors, and that's where you get the pleasure from, mm-hmm. like the from the craving being fulfilled. Is it, it anything that like uh, not anything I should say, but like cheese is a good example. So I, I eat cheese sticks when I masturbate. <laughs> 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 the choking thing got boring. It's like cheese stick. So I'm but, still scared of the choking thing. But kratom, yeah. So it gets a uh, gets a very negative connotation, negative rap because it's a legal high. It's technically, I guess. Um, but what really it is, and all it boils down to, is that people are realizing more and more. And I've been all over the country, like at rallies for this stuff, from the White House to Denver and um, and Atlanta. I was almost made a scheduled one there for it a was. Bit last year. Yeah, and I was part of the movement that stopped it. Uh, actually, Chris Bell, the guy that did that documentary, Leaf of Faith, mm-hmm. he yeah. interviewed me. You can actually see my oh, wife really? and I in that documentary. That's yeah, awesome, sweet. Yeah, he interviewed me at in front of the White House in 2016 when they said they were going to schedule it like within a week, like. Like hundreds and hundreds of people from around the country were up there yeah. with signs and protesting it, and the DEA for the first time they they said they were going to schedule it within 30 days, and 
we made like history because it's the first time in the country's history that the DEA reversed its uh, intention to schedule it a uh, drug. Wow! Every other time they've done it, they've had and they that went intention. through like the two CB and the two CE and all those schedulings, and nobody raised any hell about it at all. I don't think I know about that. The, <laughs> another other just chemicals that they oh, find. Oh, oh yes. Like yeah. 2CB and 2CE. Those were in some be. of the dockets. Mm-hmm. I remember reading about that now that you mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. But and nobody we, cares about it and nobody thinks about it. And those drugs, they can just fucking close the book on and say, this is yeah. scheduled one now and nobody even yeah. thinks about it. But some of those chemicals are just as good as MDMA for p- PTSD well, yeah. Or better. Well, Kratom no, is a, They Kratom weren't is... able to do any of the research on them because they just, pff, you're, it's illegal. You can't fucking even study it anymore. It's a shame. They're missing out on potential. And then great... I'm glad that Kratom, Kratom, Kratom yeah. is not the same way because it's see, one of the only well, things that has been illegal able illegal to stuff. kill my, I know. It's the only one of the things that kills my headaches or my migraines that I get pretty instantly. Well, it's just so much like marijuana and the fact that it is like is not a chemical induced it's 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 all natural yeah. i mean it is literally like this lady excuse me on twitter the other day because i'm always advocating for it on twitter and stuff and she was like you are such an irresponsible user you don't even know what's in it kratom half the time and i was like lady first of all it's hilarious that you don't even know me and you're calling me irresponsible and second of all i do know what's in it it's a plant it was pulled from a tree it was dehydrated, crowded down to a powder. It's just a leaf of a plant. Yeah. That's it. That is it. And then it you grinds up into super like tiny particles and you make a fucking tea out of it. And it's like marijuana and the fact that it's just like without any pharmaceutical companies ever, we would still have this this plant on our on our earth and it'll yeah. be medicinal. I mean, for millennia, people mm-hmm. only used plants for medicine. Right. Why change it now? Oh, maybe because of money. Well, yeah. it's, Big it's pharma. Like, it's just it's like the only reason else you can overuse it and abuse it. Just like sure. cheeseburgers, but you and can't masturbating. die from it. Exactly, you can't die from and it. That's the thing. Like I, there are similarities between this and Percocet and Oxys that I've tried. Sure, physically, they're not the, physically, they're not the same. Right. I can I can drink ten grams of kratom tea and not be as fucked up as if I yeah. am close to overdosing on oxy you know sure that shit's gonna make you the worst is you're gonna get super sick and just want to throw up and, you, and that's what will happen that's yeah all, if you, you drink too much of it you yeah. just throw up that's it and, that's and you thing. did that to you and exactly <laughs> that's how i you mean learn. dude i've hit the bong so hard so many times that i've puked him like it's, just, it's <laughs> like, weird that there's a prohibition on things that make you feel good it's just because like, the people that Oh, you're supposed develop to develop chemicals. <laughs> they just want you to buy their shit. Exactly. Oh. That's all it boils yeah. down to, yeah. dude. We're pretty we're pretty against big pharma yeah, ourselves. Good. Yeah. My mom, well, I bet. I'm sure. My mom has to use fentanyl cuz she oh, she has man. MS. Well, she should take some crap. I've I've tried to get okay. her to go that route. She lives yeah. in Houston now. So. Yeah, I don't know what the legal but set. She, I think it's I still think, legal in Texas. I think she but. likes the fentanyl, the fentanyl yeah. And, well, I mean, you know, yeah. she has fentanyl I've, and she has Percocet. That shit's dangerous. That she gets to take. I know, and it scares the fuck out of me. Yeah. Do you ever take pills, dude? Why? Well, I've done a lot of bad <laughs> drugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've never I've overdosed on fentanyl once. Really? Mm-hmm. I've never been a downer guy. I was a heroin addict for five years. Ooh. Yeah, Damn, I'm lucky. Son. That's why I'm just lucky to be alive every fucking day. <laughs> Is that just like, product of your environment? I think so, dude. Because yeah, it you had to be. I was in it. the neighborhood, yeah. and me and my boys like that's so what we close did. To falling down that uh, hole, it sucked, man. But I got out of it. And again, it's just like. Going through something that, that terrible and then getting out of it is, and surviving is like the biggest blessing because now you have a newfound appreciation for life and you realize, like, I mean, I got done with that by the time I was like 25. So that lives me the rest of my life to know a, a, a lot more about myself and know what I want to stay away from and know what I want to mm-hmm. accomplish. And, you know, with a clear head, you can uh, accomplish whatever. Well, is there so. any bigger waste of time than being on heroin no like sure it feels good but what the fuck are you gonna accomplish it was the worst dude i mean you wake up five in the morning drive downtown to get yeah you wake up feeling like such dog shit and then you just you go downtown you get hopefully you don't get ripped off the first time and you just like fucking you buy some dope 
off some random dude in the street in this neighborhood called the Blood.